Tesla Motors is getting into the beer game. Beer? Beer. beer so they're brewing what they're gonna call the Giga Beer for the release of the Cybertruck. Let me see. So cars and alcohol seem like a kind of a risky combo, but if your car drives itself. Officer, breathalyze the car. Have the car walk a straight line. I'm, I wasn't. So don't drink and drive. So we believe the beer is gonna be brewed in Germany. We don't know exactly what they're gonna brew, but we're guessing it's just gonna be like a no frills German pills. Well, one frill, the bottle. Look at these things. We have the bottle. What is we this? We have the actual bottle. We got this guy, Arian, from SolidWorks Tutorials with Arian. He designed and then printed these bottles for us. Arian also did all of the 3D renderings in this video of the bottle. He offers courses for beginners on SolidWorks on his website. If you're curious how he made this bottle, go check out his YouTube channel. He's doing a video on it as well. Thanks, Arian, you rock. We're going for a truck beer here. In the United States, there's definitely a correlation between trucks and light the lager truck. beer. There's an actual study that proves the correlation between light lagers and trucks. We're not making this up. That's science. All right, well, let's get this uh, system plugged in and turned on. Kyle, do you like surprises? Sure. Come check out the truck, the cyber truck. I've got one. Extended Nobody has a cyber truck. Nah, I do. Brew system is all electric. Cyber truck is all electric. Battery on the cyber truck is probably big enough to power a small scale electric brewery such as ours. So we were goofing around with that, but really it's probably possible. So if you're not familiar with this channel, this is Climber Supply. We home brew beer. We show you how to do it. Today in this video, we're going to show you how to brew the Tesla cyber truck Giga beer. We think before anybody's ever brewed before it. it's even been brewed. Get in on the ground floor. <laughs> We started the brew day with 7.2 gallons of water in the kettle and set our controller to heat up to 152 degrees Fahrenheit. As we were heating up to mash temp, we balanced the water chemistry. Ross actually did that. This is what balanced chemistry looks like right here. I got a magic wand. Three, two, one. You adjusted the water chemistry so the sulfates were higher than the chlorides. Correct which will make the beer like slightly better, not super bitter. It's gonna show off the hops is what we're doing. Yeah. Camden tablet. If you don't want to adjust water chemistry, it's too intimidating, don't worry. We don't do it for every beer. At the very least, add a half of a Camden tablet. Just add a Camden tablet. Yeah. Looking to homebrew a fine craft ale? Why not try malt? And what we have here is roasted barley. Okay. We're gonna turn the starch in this grain into sugar during the mash. Up next, before we do that, we need to crush this. Here we go. Lawson loves it when I do that. So we're mashing at 152 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit. which is 66.6 .6 degrees Celsius. Hail Celsius. You ready to mash, Kyle? I'm ready. You get it? Yeah. So what are we doing? When you add water to your grain, you start converting the starches into edible sugars that yeast like to eat. Do it gooder, make it masher. Mash it stronger, make it better. That's mash. Then after that is the magic spoon ad. Can we just drink the beer first though? All right, so this video, once again, sponsored by Magic Spoon Cereal. We brew a lot of beer, we drink a ton of beer, we got check on the carbs. What we're probably lacking in a little bit, protein, that's where Magic Spoon comes in, it's a protein-based cereal. So Magic Spoon Cereal has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, only has four net grams of carbs, and only 140 calories per serving. You can choose from flavors like cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, maple waffle, blueberry, cinnamon, and honey nut, which has now been permanently added to the Magic Spoon flavor collection. So yeah, we're gonna try this, we're gonna try this cereal. Let's do it. I like it. 
Dude, I see why Honey Nut's so popular. I'm a cookies and cream man. Ross is a Honey Nut man. All these flavors are keto friendly, grain free, soy free, so they pretty much fit in any diet. If you want to try out Magic Spoon, click the link below to save $5 or go to magicspoon.com slash CHS5. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. It's backed with 100% money back guarantee. So if you don't like it, they'll refund you. And if you live in the UK or Canada, Magic Spoon is now shipping to you. Mash, done, 60 minutes in the bag. So I'm gonna turn the heat up to boiling, but then we need to get the grains up and out. Let's go. You got one. You got two. I got, doing it blind. Three. Cha -cha. Dude, come with me. <laughs> Whoa, looking funky. You like that? You like that? Spring is in the air. Oh yeah. So we're boiling. Okay, we did the mash, we pulled the grains, we we're at a boil, and then I discovered I made a mistake. I got the wrong kind of pops from the homebrew shop. We need to go get some more. Don't worry, dude. Okay. We're just gonna have to unplug the kettle for like 10 minutes. Why? Got him! Uh, All right, our first top edition, two ounces of Tech 9. Tekanina? Tech 9? Tetsuo? Tetanus. Tetanus shot? Tetananger. If you're from uh, Tech Nangistan, let us know. Okay, you add hops to beer for bitterness and other flavors. You boil your hops for a long time, makes it nice and bitter. You boil your hops for a little bit of time, you get a lot of those aromatics. Oh yeah, we need to do an anti-drinking and driving PSA. So there's a long, proud American tradition of drinking and driving. We here at RAD, Ross Against Drunk Driving, are trying to disrupt this abominable pattern of behavior. If you're gonna have a couple of beers, hey, have the party come to you. Maybe ride your bicycle or walk. Do we make a shirt that says RAD? RAD, yeah. And it'll have a bicycle on it. Like the movie <laughs> RAD. Don't get mad. Get rad. We have 10 minutes left in the boil. Half an ounce of how it's hell. If you've never smelled hops before, <laughs> how can I describe them? It smells like the inside of the glove box of a cyber truck on a crisp fall morning. So good. We're gonna add a whirl flock tablet. It's gonna help us with flocculation later. That means clear beer. Hello. The clarity looks good. Lost and shook it up a little bit. No biggie. How does it smell? Let's, let's give it a sniff. <laughs> you smell that? It's not the beer, is it? It smells like something's burning. The truck. Oh no! Oh, no! <laughs> smells better than a burning Tesla, I can tell you that much. <laughs> Okay, Crest is averted. We just plugged the controller back into the wall. The warranty will cover that, right? Oh yeah, the warranty will cover that. Hey man, it's not even my truck. It's just the loaner. Are we ready for our last hop edition? What is this? Hops. What time is it? Zero. How much are they? Half an ounce. His chips. <laughs> Can I have one? <laughs> I love crap. <laughs> Let's fish some yeast. So after the last hop edition, we killed the heat and then we started hooking up the plate chiller. So, cold water comes out of the wall, goes through the plate chiller, hits hot wort inside of the plate chiller. You get cold wort coming out of the plate chiller, hot water going out of the hose. It's hot. It's a whole heat exchange situation. All right. Ooh, let's chill, baby. Now that we've reached our terminal temposity, I'm gonna take one squirtometer of sample. <laughs> We're gonna take a post-boil gravity reading. Screw it into the top old Antoine par here, 1051. 
right on the money. After we chilled the beer, we transferred it into our prototype keg. What's it called, the, the cyber keg? The cyber keg. We're transferring our beer into the keg. Listen to that, can you hear it? That's what the future sounds like. It's a fermenter, it's a K, all in one. This is crazy. I was gonna aerate the wart. Check this out. Like the Cybertruck, our prototype keg fermenter is a real product that is in process of being made right now. So we're gonna pitch two. I we're just one. over. What's unique about the keg is that it's an oversized corny style keg. So it's like six and a half gallons. It has a four inch track clamp fitting lid. In the lid, there's an inch and a half track clamp port, which can be fitted with a hop dropper or a sanitary spunding valve. We've installed this super heavy duty sanitary spunding valve. and We've set it to one bar or 15 PSI. That's gonna allow us to ferment this lager yeast at room temperature. You know, you typically ferment lagers like 57 degrees. We did it at room temp with the help of this sanitary spunding valve. And then we have three more ports on there, a pressure relief valve, another gas liquid post. You can mm -hmm. use that for a floating dip tube or like a long dip tube or a nitro post. And then we just have one more half inch port. You can put a pressure gauge in there, like whatever you want to put in there. If you dream it, you can do it. Super versatile. Okay, we're gonna go put this in the cellar, okay? Come on. It's gonna be a minute for you to actually get this thing, but you can pre-order it now. We'll put a link in the description below. We took another gravity reading after two weeks and determined that the beer was done fermenting. Original gravity was 1051, final gravity was 1008, so it's a dry, classic Pilsner profile. I think it puts our final alcohol by volume around 5.6. Then we put the beer in our kegerator to chill and carbonate. So, uh, can I pour you a beer? Uh, yeah, you can pour the beer, but here's the thing. Uh, none of this is food safe, so oh. we can't actually drink this, but So it's pour it. poison now, is what <laughs> so you're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome, dude. It smells uh, like a German pills. Yeah, it tastes like a cease and desist from Tesla. <laughs> Brace yourself for acquisition, man. It's gonna be a hostile takeover. Here it comes. I was expecting it to be good, but it's really good. Yeah. You know, is this the future of beer, Kyle? I don't know. The future is unwritten. It doesn't even exist yet, but you know, it does exist. Some of these other videos that we made, yeah. you can check those out. Yeah, check them out right They're now. Somewhere, there's like a link or a, mm -hmm. yeah. All over the place. Yeah, that's the present, man. Live in the now. Live in the now.